the whole thing about analog synthesizers is at some point, people started to recognize, wait a minute, we have all this great technology, great digital computer technology that's so functional, but there's something missing. And the thing that's missing is that these older pieces of technology had a sound that really connected, emotionally connected with people. And I think largely what it was, was the older analog technology was more like acoustic sound, more like the human voice. And people really connect with that because it's variable, it's fallible, uh, it's not perfect, but it also has a richness, a tone that connects with people's auditory experience of reality. Uh, digital technology, computer technology is incredibly powerful and beautiful sounding but it doesn't always sound like our human experience of reality, like sound as we experience it as animals. And these older vintage pieces of technology are not perfect in their creation of sound, but their sound is more like acoustic instruments of the human voice. And the human voice is the core of our musical interest. And anything that sounds like the human voice connects with us emotionally. And I think that's the draw of analog instruments. The ARP 2600 is one of the first portable synthesizers right up there with the Moog Mini Moog. Um, Alan R. Perlman and Dennis Collin uh, created this device and it's, it just has a really human feel to it while it has this technological power to create such a vast variety of sound. And the ARP 2600 is one of the most desired analog synthesizers ever created. The sounds that it creates are somehow more acoustic than they are electronic, which I think people at the time in 1970 or 1971 would have said, you're crazy, this sounds nothing like a violin. But compared to some of the things we came out with, with in the later 70s or 80s, this is more of an acoustic instrument. And people have the ability to interact with it directly through like the physical experience of uh, touching these sliders. It makes for a very musical experience. And people love the thing. And that's why they are so sought after. And why, when Tara is doing this performance, why has a, a level of communication that's a little bit higher than the technology that we were, we're so, that is so accessible today? The original Moog Apollo uh, was David Luce's synthesizer that could play more than one note at a time. And uh, Moog hired him to make a polyphonic synthesizer, a synthesizer that could play the more one more than one note at a time. And it developed into what was called the Polymoog, which Moog released in 1975, and everyone was very excited about because it was the first synthesizer. You could play synthesizer sounds, and you could play the entirety of the keyboard. You could even just like hold all the notes down, and it would make some sound. And so the original Moog Apollo was like that, and it was used by Keith Emerson in his tour in 1974, and a variety of songs were basically based on that synthesizer. But that was the, the prototype to the Moog Polymoog, which came out in 1975. What we're looking at here is the prototype of the Polymoog 280A, which came out later than that. But they wanted to provide a, a device that would create synthesizer sounds but you could play all the notes, and you could play it like an electric piano. And it has 14 presets, and there is limited functionality that you can control to create the sounds. Uh, but it's a very expressive device. And it has what's called a polycom chip. For each of these notes, there is a chip that'll, that is an entire synthesizer on its own. So each of these keys has its own synthesizer, which is really cool. So when you're playing it, you have the ability to play these sounds and each note you play is its own synthesizer. And this is in the Bob Moog Foundation collection. 
And we're so proud to have it because it's such a stepping stone to what came later. And also, it's such an expressive and beautiful device. We were so happy that Tara could use it uh, to do what she was doing. This is uh, Michelle Mokusa's personal uh, Voyager. The Voyager was the last synthesizer designed by Bob Moog. And the Voyager, which came out in 2002, was Bob's uh, modern version of the Mini Moog. He took all of his synthesizer knowledge that he had developed uh, from 1964 on, and he put it into this modern device and created an extremely extra expressive, beautiful sounding, and functionally complex device. That's what this is. And it's fantastic. Uh, Tara is fantastic with the Voyager and just pulls some really great sounds out of it, especially because she's so obviously influenced by some of the 1970s horror movies that have a very distinctive analog sound. And she is able to coax that out of this device designed by Bob Mode. And she does it so well, and it's so expressive and so functionally interesting, but also texturally and aesthetically beautiful. Uh, so this device is fantastic for her, and especially in combination with this vintage device, which is probably, let's see, when would this have come out? Like 1978 or so. And this synthesizer, which even though it's an ARP, it's still kind of Moog because this particular version of the ARP 2600 has a Moog filter in it. The 4012 filter, which ARP kind of lifted from Moog, it's a ladder filter. So it actually has a Moog sound, but it has this ARP functionality. But even so, when you're playing with the filter, you're getting an, uh, a Moog filter. And Tara really has the ability to coax some expressive sounds out of the Moog filter. And so tonight's performance, certainly, she was getting these great Moog sounds from all of these keyboards, which all ultimately have a Moog sound to them.